yeah also the the Cannabis Insider, it's here. We are inside the cannabis industry. <laughs> that's my voiceover. Yeah, that's like my 90s like voiceover song. guy. Uh, on, welcome, welcome. This is our second one. I was not on for the first one, but you had our two fearless leaders of hobby and Patrick taking the reins. I had some amazing conversation yesterday. If you are in the chat and ready to talk about cannabis stocks, I want to talk to you. What's yep. up, Robert Prescott, Cannabis Insider, we Donkey Limit, my man or woman. Um, I'm not sure because your name is Donkey <laughs> Limit. Um, but <laughs> welcome, welcome. Uh, if you're ready to talk about cannabis stocks, I need two things from you. Drop a one in the chat and drop uh, your favorite ticker. I don't know. We'll, we'll get to all these tickers later, but we want you all to engage. Jeff, welcome in. Sundial, as always, super SPAC man. Uh, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, we are trying to get them on our cannabis hour show, which is still happening every Thursday, by the way. Uh, but I do need to say, Javi, what up, bro? How you doing? doing How you doing? I'm doing good, man. I'm here to talk about cannabis. Tons of news today. Uh, but like, it was like, not like the newsiest day for MSOs, right? No, it was like, it was like a newsy know. day for uh, maybe some companies that we don't know. I mean, there was one in particular uh, that we'll talk about in a second that I, I've never heard of them before, but they're listed and, uh, you know, interesting. Their their expansion is awesome. Um, look at all these ones. Y'all, yeah. I love it. I'm ready to go. Um, Javi, let's get started, man. Tell me, what what's your first shout out? What, what, what are we starting the day with? Big news of the day is coming out of a privately held company. It's not publicly traded. It's Dutchy. It's a cannabis e-commerce platform. By the way, you know, I would be remiss if I didn't mention, you know, Benzinga is based out of Detroit. We represent the 313. We represent Michigan. And we love to see, uh, you know, founders with Michigan roots and Detroit roots like, you know, the Lipson brothers behind Dutchy, you know, being so successful. Having said that, Dutchy, the company in question today, closed a $200 million Series C funding round led by none other than Tiger Global. The valuation is now up to $1.7 billion. Big money. Mm -hmm. and, Big and it raised money. $35 million maybe like seven months ago. So it's, it's, it's a very cool. Also in the, in the, you know, in the funding round where included Dragonier, DFJ growth, uh, you know, and some of its uh, prior investors like Casa Verde Capital, that's you know, Snoop Dogg's investment fund, Thrive Capital, Grand Ventures, and uh, Howard Schultz. He is the former chairman and CEO of um, Starbucks. Uh, mm -hmm. Also today, and, and with this, I will wrap up this, Dutchie announced it will acquire Green Bits and Leaf Logics. That, that's where I wanted to go, right there. Y'all, the yeah. 200 million, I mean, one point, however many billion valuation is incredible for, for an ancillary uh, cannabis company. I mean, that that speaks for itself. I don't need to go too far into that, but I think the number that sticks out to me the most, they now process with, with these two acquisitions, Javi, it was green bits and leaf logics, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. With those two acquisitions, they process 10% of ca legal cannabis sales globally. globally. 10%. Now 10% of like a state market is awesome. 10%, mm -hmm. They process 10% of cannabis sales legally, obviously, globally. I mean, the moment this ticker uh, occurs, whenever they feel like they need it to occur, um, 
I, I'm, I'm, I'm partaking. Uh, that's awesome. That is, there's no ticker yet, Pam. Uh, that yeah. was just our private news of the day. It was huge because Green Bits and Leaf Logics are both well-known companies themselves. Dutchie obviously was as well. But to wrap up uh, those two companies, I think, is just ginormous yeah. and, piece and, of news. And Tiger Global. I mean, that is huge, you know, yeah. in and of itself. I mean, you know, a fun, this is, this is traditional invest, like, you know, institutional investments. Yeah. This, this is not a cannabis focused fund. This is not an alternative investments fund. This is Tiger Global. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, we, we should, I, I want to look more into their cannabis side of investments though. I mean, do you have any, any maybe public companies that Tiger Global has invested in? If you don't off the top of your head, that's fine. Uh, but just to kind of give some like insight into maybe where they've stuck their their toes into the cannabis industry before and to see their success, because this is a major institution. Yeah. I mean, from what I know, I mean, I've, I've heard it's some others, but not as big as this one. Uh, really, the, the only one I know of, like the beat that's being backed by Tiger Global off the top of my head. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No worries. You know, I think something I need to look in then. Um, so, you know, one, one thing I wanted to bring up with to you specifically, this is a public list, publicly listed company listed on pink, uh, H E N C this is hero technologies. They have recently expanded via subsidiaries to Massachusetts mm -hmm. and, uh, Colorado. And yep. I, I, I would like a little background here, Javi. I'm not really too familiar with them. Um, but it seems like they are moving relatively quickly right now. Yeah, I mean, they, they, they are buying uh, properties. Um, again, I mean, they, they just entered the Massachusetts market. Um, it's, it's relatively small, but pretty interesting. They, they raised uh, earlier this month almost half, a little bit over half a million dollars. Um, so they're growing. They're growing. It's interesting to keep an eye on. Um, well, and... My, my kind of thought process when it comes to you all in the chat thinking, uh, where is my value going to be, right? Like, wh where can I get the most bang for my buck uh, when it comes to cannabis stocks? And uh, I had a discussion with an investment banker two weeks ago, well, two and a half weeks ago. And his advice to me was well-known companies that are expanding into not as uh, built-out markets. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, I, I, it seems like an obvious bit of advice, right? But like when we all look at our cannabis stocks, let's, let's, let's be real. I, I bought CGC. I mean, come on. <laughs> like who hasn't had CGC in their portfolio at some point in the last year? Uh, Sundial. I, you know, we, I think we all own Sundial probably at one point. And, you know, I've seen that in the chat quite a bit here. I would say, quite. you know, we'll, we'll, S we'll get management on soon. Yeah. I work, I'm, you know, I don't want to like sit here and downplay them with the down players or upplay them with the excitement that could be, because I, I think, I think it's important to, to hear what they're going to do operationally to mm -hmm. back up the excitement. And yes, I think, we were, you know, we were mentioning at the show with Patrick, um, you know, we're, you know, we brought up some, some analyst commentary mm -hmm. on Sundial, uh, BMO capital markets being very bearish. Uh, and then uh, Cantor Fitzgerald, Pablo Swanich being Pablo. Uh, go to Benzinga.com slash cannabis and check out that article. Um, it's titled something like why these analysts believe there's more downside to Sundial. So well, I think they took advantage of the, of the excitement, though, you know, and it's like I, I, I tend to agree it was a little unfounded. You know, they got caught up in the volatility of a couple weeks ago, but yeah, there's a lot of room for growth there you know, that they can take advantage of. So I'd love to hear from the CFO and, you know, we'll keep working to get them on. Um, because I, I agree that, you know, that I think there's more to it than just horrible or great as there is with any stock. Maybe I'm over, but the reason I say that, to be honest, is their technicals are great, right? <laughs> you know, like they, they outside of like, you know, a couple of these news articles that have come bad. out recently, they're I mean, there's some buy rate like, on that stuff, is man. a bit of an overstatement. I mean, there's, oh, yes, right, of course. Everything is a blanket statement when it comes to retail investing. But, like, <laughs> their technicals are pretty good, you know? Talking, you know, talking about technicals, one that's very interesting in another article that we, we published yesterday on Benzinga.com slash cannabis is about Tilray. Tilray was trading up yesterday in anticipation of if, if the meeting, the final meeting for the approval of its merger with Afria, 
uh, you know, the ticker is uh, both the NASDAQ are TLRY and APHA. So TLRY and AFA. Uh, and and they, they are, you know, they're supposed to, you know, they're expected to approve uh, the merger, creating the largest uh, cannabis company in the world by revenue. And yesterday we saw very, very interesting technical um, technical points being crossed. So again, go to benzinga.com slash cannabis and check out which are these technical points that you should be looking at. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think a really cool thing to keep in mind when looking at the Afria and Tilray merger is their partners, right? How does that affect Charlotte's Web? How does that affect uh, CanDoc? You know, keep an eye on CanDoc when they go to list on the NASDAQ. I, mm -hmm. That's going to be an awesome play to back be in. Not advice. I'm not giving you advice. I'm just saying keep an eye on CanDoc. None of this is a yes. We're just talking. But yeah, this. but but if we and Tilray have very, very, very big uh, partners, um, if I'm not confused, uh, Tilray has this deal with Novartis. Um, really interesting. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the, the partners they have, I think Afria is, is partnered up with Molson Coors, if I'm not confused again. Uh, but but yeah, I think all of that coming together under, under one company, you know, where they will combine both management teams, uh, both of, of their of their of their footprints, they have very little overlap, right? I really I asked mm -hmm. both of the CEOs uh, a month ago, and and they said, you know, I asked them like, hey, but you know, why does this make sense to you, right? Aren't there a lot of overlapping assets? And and you know, he just broke down all the assets, and there was probably ten percent overlap. You know, Tilray is, is, is strong in, in 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 Europe in certain regions, and then Afria has its own different international operations. And they operate mostly in, in different provinces in Canada as well. Um, so it's a very very interesting combination. Again, the, the uh, Tilray brings uh, uh, you know the big pharma as a partner, mm -hmm. and, and Afria brings big alcohol as a partner. All yeah. of that really plays into a very interesting merger. Um, and I was personally not bullish in either Afria or Tilray until uh, a couple of months prior to the to the merger announcement. Have become considerably bullish on both uh, yeah. after the announcement. More of a buy and hold situation, right? Because uh, of course the, the mean, merger is already. You're just priced. you're just you're just talking about cannabis at that point. <laughs> um, <laughs> for the for the moment, at least, you know, buy the dip and don't sell the rip. No, uh, Mitch would slap me in the face if he was here and I said that. Um, well, sorry, but, sorry, you know. Yeah, come on. <laughs> yeah, get off my back, Mitch. <laughs> I'm kidding, man. No, but I, I ooh, Clever Leaves. I, I love that play. Another one. Another CLVR is such a good play. Another one that did a very interesting turnaround, right? I had my issues with them when they were, when they were private. Right. And I brought it up with management. Like personally brought it up with management. Like, hey, I, I Look see some guy. Who yeah, froze? why not? Oh, there he is. <laughs> no, we got you back. Keep going. Why not? I mean, I, and I brought it up and, and, and told them like, hey, I see these issues with the company and they paid attention. And honestly, you know, the, the, the their, you know, their whole activity is, is very interesting. Their, their NASDAQ listing makes them particularly attractive. They're one of the four dominant players in, in Colombia. That's undisputed or five, right? We have uh, Chiron Life Sciences also publicly traded. Let me find all of the tickers. I don't want to miss. Them. Well, yeah. So take well, note of. Yes, yeah, yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. You go. No, no. That mine was a little bit of a of a time filler that I wanted to touch on. That's been brought up in the chat a few times. But finish your thought, and then I'll jump. So I mean, you know. Again, interesting play, and, and we'll get a little bit more into Clever Leaves in a little bit. But but here is, you know, so CLVR, that's their ticker. Uh, and it's an interesting play on the Colombian market uh, and exports, of course. There's also Chiron Life Sciences, which is K-H-R-N-F. One more time, K-H-R-N-F on the OTC. Well, they There's exploded there. onto the scene. Chiron Life Sciences, I mean, yep. yes, like it, they, it, it was partially due to COVID. It was, but they went, I think from the, they, they debuted and then the next month, 450% increase in, uh, and I, I think pharma, something to do with like, I think pharmaceutical, um, products being sent out or medical prescriptions. That was it. Medical prescriptions being written, uh, for them. Yeah. So Chiron exactly. Life Sciences, I think has a lot of runway in front of them. Another very interesting uh, play in Colombia is Avicana. 
A, B, C, and F. Again, A, B, C, and F on the OTC. All these stocks are also traded on the on the on Canadian exchanges. That kind of, for instance, is on the senior TSX exchange. But we are, you know, fans of U.S. stickers. So yeah, and I, I would be remiss very, if I didn't say yeah. Chiron Life Sciences and Clever Leaves are both presenting at our biotech conference next week. Uh, mm -hmm. BZSmallCap.com. If you all want to see some awesome cannabis and psychedelic biotech companies, uh, make sure you check it out. But anyway, Avacana. Chiron Life Sciences, yeah, Clever Leaves. Another one, you know, just growing and, and they have, you know, they have their, their cannabis production site on, uh, in Colombia and then they're based in Canada and they do a lot of biotech, you know, research and R&D and like very focused on biotech and they, they, you know, they were admitted into Johnson & Johnson's incubator very early on. Uh, very super interesting. I think we should get in, in, you know, into the details of each one of, of these companies in the future. And then the last mm -hmm. one, uh, there's two two others I want to mention for for the Colombia play. One is Farmacielo, Farmacielo. That is P C L O F on the O T C. The other very big player in Colombia, and one that is uh, emerging and I think is is very very interesting to watch is One World Pharma. O W P C. The uh, John Sally company, right? Really interesting because the CEO is none other than our very good friend, NBA legend Isaiah Thomas, right? And again, they they have very, 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 very interesting play around. It's not John Sally. It is Isaiah Thomas. Thomas. You're right. Yeah. yeah, wrong basketball player. Sorry, everybody. I said John Sally. I was wrong. That's another one. <laughs> yeah. That's a different cannabis company. Uh, he, he has deuces. He also does a little bit of, of cannabis insurance. You know, all the smart, you know, former NBA so, players. Are to good. kind of wrap up this Latin American, uh, you know, and, and this isn't advice, but I do want Javi's thought process. Looking at 2021, which of these companies is, is poised for the best year? Can you say that? Do you want to say that? If not, uh, hmm. what excites you? I mean, the, the reason why I brought these five up is because I think all of them uh, have the conditions to, to thrive, right? Uh, this year, right? I, I wouldn't bring them up if they were one of the millions of, of you know, not, not actual millions, but hundreds of cannabis companies operating in Colombia, right? These five are, are big companies with very different, you know, business models, but all of them, you know, very, very well, you know, very advanced in, in their, in their products, very, very, you know, built up. Uh, and by the way, we have a, a very interesting news out of kind of coming up in a couple of days that we received under embargo. So stay tuned for that. As so well. we can't tell you right now is what Javi just said. Um, yeah, thanks, Javi. I appreciate you. Um, yeah, so uh, Zenon or Orion, that was K-H-R-N-F. Uh, they are OTC listed, listed for uh, Chiron Life Sciences. You have NASDAQ listed Clever Leaves, C-L-V-R. You have um, Avacana, uh, which that was just up on the screen, Aaron, if you want to put that back up. Uh, but C-N-F. A, B, C, and F, and then Pharmacielo, which was P, C, L, O, F. P, C, L, O, F. Was there one more? I think we got four. One World Pharma. O one World Pharma. Perfect. Yeah, so that's so, your Columbia wrap up for today. Yeah, that's your Columbia and Latin American wrap up for the day. But honestly, all really fantastic companies. And then CLVR to add to the tickers below, but awesome, awesome list. Thanks, Javi. Um, you know, kind of moving into. Uh, I don't know if you all touched on it yesterday or not, but I love the organogram news. I, I, I love it. I, I think, you know, big tobacco is starting to get in to cannabis. You know, they see the value, they see the competition that could come from it, you know, and they're starting to invest in some of these companies. Organogram got, I think it was around what, 20% uh, yeah, to million for 19.9% of the company. Yeah. BAT third tobacco company to invest in cannabis. BTI. For NYSC, BTI, for British BTI, yeah, I, I meant like, uh, like they they go by. Oh, the oh yeah, yeah. The company, yeah. <laughs> you know, is goes for a BAT. The ticker, confusingly enough, is BTI. That was um, my fault. I shouldn't have said BAT. We talk letters all the time, and I, I did that fault. yesterday. Though. That's why I was for it's not. <laughs> BTI. It's not like I knew it <laughs> yeah, um, you know, Toddy Parent Paranotti, Toddy Paranotti. Uh, I, I just looked this up. Uh, so Advanced Flower Capital, uh, or AFC Gamma, leading provider of institutional loans to high-quality cannabis companies nationwide, that makes me nervous. Um, you know, and, and 
I think there's some news about a listing IPO. Uh, it, it's interesting, but debt's going to change in, in the cannabis industry. Yeah. It, it's going to change significantly. Uh, and I wonder if those that are putting debt into the cannabis industry right now are set up for success. Um, that's my, I mean, that's my question. Yeah. So I don't know the answer. Usually, usually smart investors are, are telling me this and have been saying this for years. And, and this is something that I very much agree with. And it's many of these, uh, technology or, or, or financial solutions for the cannabis industry will thrive if they are starting in the cannabis industry, but their, but their value proposition still has to be unique and scalable beyond the cannabis mm -hmm. industry. So what we're seeing is, is, you know, compliance firms, you know, emerge or, or, you know, payments technologies emerge. And at first they work in cannabis and then they go to other highly regulated industries like, you know, alcohol or tobacco or pharmaceuticals or whatever. Right. So when, when I look at these companies, what I look for is scalability, you know, outside of cannabis, right. When, yeah. when, when we see in one, two or three years, right banking normalized for cannabis suddenly you know a a, a a company that focuses just on on you know financing cannabis companies what would have a lot to do not saying that afc gamma is the case by the way yeah i mean i yeah i don't think we are this isn't a hit on afc gamma i think it's just my personal experience uh when it comes to debt and where i see debt going once cannabis is legalized and i see other debt providers coming in and just changing changing the way it's done, changing the value, changing uh, where these companies make their money. And I think uh, just somebody who provides loans to cannabis takes a significant hit when that comes. I, 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 do, I do know that Renaissance, uh, it's Renaissance Capital, right? It's not the same as Renaissance Technologies. It's a different fund, right? If anyone in the chat knows that. Hmm, not me. Um, until somebody in the chat knows that. Um, somebody mentioned VFF. Uh, I'm a big VFF fan. Village Farms, NASDAQ listed, VFF. Uh, they are a greenhouse provider. Uh, so C Canada mainly, but also the U.S. Uh, they grow produce, uh, tons and tons and tons of produce. I think it was either tomatoes or, or lettuce was their main market, but they also grow cannabis. And they have been able to really sidestep Canadian, uh, I, I guess, basically the the difficulties of running a canadian cannabis company right now when it comes to high taxes when it comes to uh the illicit market in canada and they've done a very good job at it mm -hmm. Javi, do, you, do you have any thoughts there um i mean i think it's a very very interesting company they have been you know pretty volatile in in in, in the past you know three months or so we can look at the chart right now i'll bring it up in a second but one thing that that is interesting is, you know, again, after they enter the the U.S., uh, again, Cantor Fitzgerald, Pablo Swanich initiated coverage Pablo. with a neutral rating and a price target of twenty bucks. For reference, the the stock is now trading a little bit over fifteen and a half. Um, and and we can go a little bit into the thesis, right? Um, I don't know if if that's of interest or not. Um. I mean, maybe not. I think it's a high level. So if you want to like summarize and move and we'll move toward it, that'd be my thought. But, you know, I think for these investors that are interested in a value play, I think Village Farms is one of them. Not advice, but something that I would look at as an investor, I think. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, that probably came off as advice. Yeah, it's not for, advice. For Andrew, it's, you know, a lot about like Village's low costs and methodical approach. Uh, and it's EBITDA margins, right? So he sees them as, 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 as you know, good executors of, of, of this. And even assigning a, a, a value of zero to, to its Canadian operations, they still see the, the you know, the, the stock uh, trading at, at very decent valuations. You know, I've seen, yeah, I appreciate that, Javi. Just to kind of touch on um, uh, some of the things that are happening in the chat right now. Uh, so IIPR and Power Reit, you know, I, I, I think they're very, very strong plays right now, right? And I, I think when you look at, you know, cannabis legalizing whenever that F that happens, um, mm -hmm. I mean, are they as strong? Like, I mean, do yeah. other REITs come in that are... I mean, yeah, REITs are, REITs are a big player here. You yeah. know, sale leasebacks are hot as hell, you know, for a good reason. 
Uh, and IIPR is probably the largest naturally. Oh, for sure. Today, right? I, they, IIPR, they, I think, is fine. I think they're a great company. They're they're around for the long time. Power REIT, I think, is really they're in. I think three different industries. I think they're in solar farms and cannabis and one other. Uh, and I think they are expanding and setting themselves up for success. Also, um, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, Javi. Yeah, no, not at all. Do you want to share with our viewers, you know, the the news out of, of IIPR today? Do it. Do it. I don't have it pulled up, so all you. Okay. Bro. So I mean, what what they did was, you know, they they agreed to purchase a cannabis cultivation site in Illinois for six point five million, and they secured forty five million in financing to complete a build out uh, of this facility, which they will then subsequently lease back to Forefront Ventures, as part of a twenty year <laughs> agreement. And interestingly enough, Forefront Ventures will be the one funding the trans, uh, you know, uh, some of the, the construction, you know, and this deal totals fifty one point five million. So it's it's a, it's a sale leaseback, but also an, a, a unique one, right? In in the sense that that Forefront is then financing the build out for the, the the company that they will for the facility they will be renting out. Forefront is so interesting to me. I love that management team. I really do. Um, you know, they're good partners to Benzinga, so full full disclosure there. But, um, you know, I mean, they could very well come in and be a big player in the CPG and retail parts and aspects of this industry. Uh, so keep an eye on them. Yeah. And, oh, and before, you know, we, we, we cannot, like, you know, forget to mention Flower Corporations, you know, 15.9 bought deal offering. Let my they're in the world. Uh, Ease launching in Michigan, Grow Generation acquiring another property. We covered one yesterday. Another one. Another one today. Another another company called Fifty Five Hydroponics. Um, you know, and, well, and I mean, there's so much going on, right? And, and, and you know, before I forget, a a big shout out to our friend uh, Harrington, who was featured on Rolling Stone mm -hmm. uh, a few days ago. Al's the uh, man. He's doing he's doing amazing work, you know, to help build. Uh, and empower African Americans within the cannabis industry. Yeah, I love Al Harrington. That man is the man. He's the man. If you didn't hear me say it the first three times, um, so Grow Generation. I mean, there's there's no shortage of news there. If you all don't know them, what is it? It's G R W G. If I'm not mistaken, there. Yeah. Um, you know, pretty common portfolio company there for cannabis investors, uh, and for good reason, I should say. Um, oh, was it Flower? Yeah, it was F L W P F. If I'm not mistaken, yeah. FLWPF. I, I, have, uh, I have like some, 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 you know, uh, little tricks to remember the ticker. So for this one, I think Flower Puff. <laughs> FLWPF. Right. And the growth generation is just go Grooge, you know, and, and I remember it. That That's kind yeah. of my. <laughs> I like that. Grooge. Uh, it's like, it sounds like a Marvel Grooge villain. For uh, FLWPF is interesting. They're Canadian, uh, but they are also now European. They extended to uh, Portugal, I think. Um, pretty sure it was it was uh, Portugal, um, but you know they were, they've been in Europe for a good bit now. So they're they're an interesting company, y'all. Uh, Flower is very interesting. Um, you know, I think next time I want to talk to you. I, we don't need to talk about it now, uh, but we will touch on GTI. Um, you know, and the OTC. Uh, what is it? QX. Um, yeah, you know, I, I think there's a lot of it. GTBIF. That's GTBIF. You know, I know there's a ton of G GTI. You know, people want to know about GTI and for good reason. But I think you know, just to kind of put them up against some of their exchange, quote unquote, competitors would be an interesting conversation for us to we, have. We did have GTI on our Women's uh, International Women's Month Month special, uh, which is airing on March 26th. Perfect. Uh, and we had Dina, the SVP of. of you know, regulatory and government affairs is one of the guests. Um, yeah. Well, and stay tuned, y'all. Uh, there's there's tons more to talk about. Uh, we'll talk about Cure Leaf, True Leaf, GTI. These are all uh, well known stocks, but we want to make sure we touch on stocks that maybe aren't as known as well. Maybe give you some interesting value plays. Uh, I didn't even get to the Poseidon, the Poseidon uh, consideration article that we posted today. Oh, so yeah. we'll, we'll tons of we'll, news. We'll, we'll, get a, we'll, we'll, we'll touch get on a, that tomorrow. Or or Monday, I'm not. Or Monday. Tomorrow. Don't don't don't. Okay, steal we, we'll, I'm kidding. Well, y'all go read it, and then we'll give you some commentary 
later this week or early next week. Recommendations from from one of the best investment firms on low cost stocks to invest in the can, you know, in. I mean, how could you not want to go to that site right now and see it? Yep. Y'all, this is so much fun for us. We love talking with you all in the chat. Uh, Some awesome recommendations. I wish I could talk to you guys about them for hours. Um, But there's so much opportunity here in cannabis uh, now and obviously way in the future too. And we'll, we'll continue to bring it, but shoot us an email, um, events at Benzinga.com. Um, you can hit me up on Twitter, Elliot lane 10. That's Elliot lane one zero, uh, Javier Haas. What's your handle? At Javier Hase on every at Javier Hase. Uh, so the, he is the man with the plan posts. Awesome news. Please give us a follow email us. If you want us want us to talk about certain stocks or have certain guests on cannabis hour, but we're here every weekday talking about cannabis. Yep. Thanks everybody. Aaron, Back to you.